the bottom line is that David Mack wants a lot of money to continue to talk. And I think he's a very smart man, whether he ever talks about his that that is a still open murder investigation. He's no dummy. So what he says, I think he's going to parse in a, in a real way. Okay, let's take this brother over here. Mike P, the MC, I think that is. What's, What's up, bro? good, bro? I didn't, I didn't expect you to put me on live. What's good, though? Yo, peace, man. It's been an epic show, man, for real. Don, choke, one love, man. Peace. Appreciate you guys. So, yo, Don, my question is this. Um, I, I thought, I didn't think I was going to be on camera and all this shit, damn. FBI definitely got me on the list now. Anyway, so, yo, Don, um... Have you gotten a chance to talk to Michael Carlin and as far as the dossier podcast and all that is concerned? Have you guys got to work together? Carlin is actually on an episode of the dossier. Um, I do speak to him. Um, RJ Bond is also um, uh, in an episode of the dossier. RJ has done a lot of work as it relates to the Tupac murder. He has a lot of information and a lot of documentation that I think is important. But I've spoken to both of them. Um, Michael Carlin actually gave me some audio that he had of a call he did with Suge that I thought was very interesting. Um, and you can go back to season one. And if you look, Michael Carlin's name will be in the episode. You should listen to that because it is really pretty interesting. Yeah, I played that. Mind, I played that. If you don't mind me adding, Joke. Yo, Joke, if you don't mind me adding, you know, it's like, I just feel like he was working with Russell Poole right before Russell Poole passed. And it seems like he's getting pushed outside of the conversation. And I, I just I just feel like Michael Douglas Carlin's voice should be heard more. I'm not saying, and, and like like you said, I did notice you used that Suge, you know, you referenced that Suge interview he did. But, you know, I don't know, man. It, this stuff's touchy for everybody, but I don't know. I think Carlin has done amazing work. Hey, everybody. I really appreciate the young man that stood up for me on the Choke No Joke show. And I appreciate everyone that stands up for me in the comments and all the information that has and is being released, including on Insomniac Wide Awake. I appreciate especially those that stand up for Russell Poole and the truth. Russell Poole knew that corrupt cops were involved in the murder of Tupac Shakur, and he knew that corrupt cops were involved in the murder of Christopher Wallace. My documentary film, Minnesota, the Modern Day Selma, is now the film that parents play for their children when they want to have the talk about dealing with the police. It's a cautionary tale about the types of police that exist. I've been told that it should be played for all cops while they're in the academy too. I don't think that's ever going to happen, but it sure is a nice thought. And fortunately for us, there are cops like Russell Poole that also exist. And we call him Officer Friendly. And everybody remembers Officer Friendly because policing has taken a much different uh, approach these days. So my only meaningful tie to law enforcement uh, is my connection to Russell Poole. I had done a humanitarian project and his aunt and uncle uh, and it was successful, and they encouraged me to meet their nephew. They put me in touch with them, and we had several telephone conversations before we actually met. I was immediately impressed with his commitment to solving these cases, a commitment that was so stern that he put his life on the line and took his commitment to his death at sheriff's headquarters. I was supposed to be at that meeting, but I was disinvited when we learned that a sheriff had let the shooters into the One Oak to kill Suge Knight and had driven those shooters to the airport the next day. Russell was told not to bring Carlin 
as this was now a cop thing. It was now a thin blue line thing. And Russell and I spoke of the risks, and he chose to go alone into the lion's den at a meeting that I had arranged with Sheriff Jimmy McDonald. Now, who announced Russell Poole's death to the world? It was Reggie Wright Jr., a suspect in both murders. No, the lead suspect in both murders. What does it tell you when the lead suspect in both cases is the one that announces the death of the investigator? The man that accompanied all witnesses to their interviews with police in Vegas and sat in on those interviews. What kind of investigation is being done if a former cop civilian is allowed to sit in on interviews? And we know from Russell Poole, when he went to Las Vegas, he was told that the murder books were going to stay up on the shelf and that they weren't going to solve it because the politicians didn't want to solve it. And now they want to wrap this up in a nice, neat little bow and they want to solve it in a way that uh, is just a little bit too nice, neat, and pretty. Now, Reggie Wright Jr. also testified to the grand jury in the Keefe D. indictment, and Reggie can violate his grand jury instructions without any fear of being charged with a crime because he knows that he's connected and he's protected. And Reggie is mentioned in uh, Reggie and his father are both mentioned in Keith D's book, and you should pay attention to that. It's all just, you know, they're glossed over. Now, pay attention to the fact that a hood book, Compton Street Legend, has an index in the back. And I've read a lot of hood books, and there are never any indexes in the back of hood books. But this more reads like a deposition than a book and that Keefe D, in his interviews, has no idea what's actually written in his book. Pay attention to Reggie's connections to the murders and his involvement in the cover-ups. Reggie always seems to have inside information on the status of these cases, and when Russell died, Reggie knew about it amazingly quick. Reggie gloated about Russell's death. He was elated. I got a call from Alex in England to notify me that Russell had died, and I was waiting for Russell. I kept sending him text messages that went unanswered, and Russell and I had a pact that he was going to reach out to me the minute he got out of that meeting and let me know what had happened. When the sheriff did their press release, they attempted to cover up the reason Russell was there, making it sound like he was there to solve a meaningless cold case. And only when I weighed in about this and what the case was that he was there to solve did they admit that he was there to solve the Tupac and Biggie cases. Now, why would the sheriffs lie? Because they also know that corrupt cops were involved in the murders and the attempted murder of Suge Knight. Let me say that again. Corrupt cops were involved in the murders. Greg Cating now lies to the media, claiming that he was the original lead investigator in the Tupac murder case. Pure stolen valor. There was never an investigation at LAPD before Russell met with the Las Vegas Metro Police Department, and he determined that these cases were connected, and therefore he opened a homicide investigator investigation also into the Tupac murder. So Russell Poole was the original lead investigator into Tupac's murder from LAPD, and Greg Kading has always been jealous of Russell, and he's stolen Russell's valor. Russell Poole received 42 commendations for his dedication to solving crimes while employed by LAPD. Kading had to put his finger on the scales of justice to solve his crimes. He never did the work, and he never earned the convictions. Innocent people were convicted. He was admonished by a sitting federal judge citing Greg Kading's reckless disregard for the truth. He stole Russell's valor the way that Reggie Wright Jr. stole Suge Knight's valor, 
the way Snoop steals Tupac's valor. Stolen Valor Greg Kading is a new name to add to the other monikers of Cover Up Kading, Shady Greg, and Lion Greg Kading. Russell, uh, Randall Sullivan never paid Russell a penny for the two books that he wrote that could have never been completed without Russell's involvement. Russell Poole sold the rights to his life story to HBO. Sylvester Stallone was going to play Russell Poole but it was all a ruse. Once the rights were secured, police chief Bill Braddon interceded and killed the movie deal. Russell thereafter never got a penny. And when they made City of Lies, Russell and his family never got a penny. When they made Unsolved, Russell and his family never got a penny. Nobody paid him anything because they concluded that he had become a public figure. And it's very difficult to be called to account for defaming a public figure. Now, I worked on a legal defamation case where a young brother, a congressional candidate, had been disparaged by a sitting member of Congress who said that this man was dishonorably discharged when he wasn't. This congresswoman spent $750,000 to disparage this young man on the airwaves. We filed suit. I sourced the attorney and I was part of the team that fought this in court. I participated in the writing of the legal briefs, and I was the liaison in the case. Now, we got creamed in the lower court as the judge had ties to the congresswoman, and any sitting judge in superior court needs the Democratic Party to get elected again, and so we just weren't going to get a fair shake there. But when we got to the appellate court, a three-judge panel ruled in our favor in a unanimous decision. The defendant filed for a rehearing, and we once again won. This was then appealed to the California Supreme Court, where we won again, and this has now changed case law in California. And we fought against the same law firm and attorney that defended the city of Los Angeles in the Christopher Wallace civil trial, we beat them. So this might also be why I'm sidelined, but that's not why I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this story that since Russell Poole is a public figure, it would be very difficult for him to file suit against anyone for defamation, even if he was living. Since he's dead, it's impossible to prove damages. So that means anything these corrupt people dream up can be put out to disparage Russell. They were able to spend over half a billion dollars to disparage Russell Poole as a raging, deranged alcoholic. The t- production budgets of all projects that defame Russell Poole and the marketing costs that were spent and continue to be spent add up to over half a billion dollars. That's billion with a B. The only person that refutes the half a billion dollar media spend is me with my little YouTube channel. And I was the one that was working with Russell Poole up to the end. He was never deranged and he wasn't an alcoholic. Prosecutors that I met told me that Russell always gave them the truth about every case or as they called it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. He never lied to get a conviction. He didn't have to coerce testimony. He always was a relentless pursuer of the truth, and if the case couldn't be made against a target suspect, he let the truth make the decision, and that case was dismissed. Don Sikorsky says it put Greg Kidding on one side of the ledger and then put Sergio Robledo and Russell Poole on the other side of the ledger, and Kading doesn't even come close to the uh, accommodations and whatnot of both Russell Poole and Sergio Robledo. Greg Kading is a fictional storyteller and a truth te- uh, truth twister, and he's a coercer of testimony. Russell Poole and Sergio Robledo are the side of integrity. Now, I don't personally know Phil Carson. Uh, Don puts him in that same category. 
but I have listened to all of Don's broadcasts with great interest. And Carson vindicates Russell, who saw evidence being purged from the murder books. Phil Carson also relates a salient fact that Sheriff Jimmy McDonald was at LAPD and he was the one to show Phil Carson the murder books. This is a fact that McDonald never disclosed to Russell and I when we were discussing the murders with him. Jimmy was the man that I arranged the meeting that Russell went to his death. Carson also tells a similar account to Russell's that he saw evidence going missing, being purged by LAPD over the course of his investigation. Now, we'll never know who purged that evidence, but we do know that McDonald has his own ties to these cases. McDonald listened with great interest to us, wanting to know what we were working on, and he deceived us by not telling us he had previously worked on these cases. So how do we know who to listen to in these cases? Who are the truth tellers? I would say anyone that has ties to LAPD, you need to be wary of. If they had relatives that were in LAPD or if they personally were in LAPD, you need to be very suspect of them as being part of the cover-up. And anyone that says corrupt cops were not involved is part of the cover-up. If they're pushing the Orlando Anderson lie, they're part of the cover-up. If they disparage and discredit Russell Poole, they're part of the cover-up. So who was Russell Poole? The Russell Poole I knew was the one uh, that was spoken of over and over by so many prosecutors and police at his funeral. They all said, Russell was integrity with a capital I. Russell was integrity with a capital I. Among the things that Russell Poole was taking with him to that meeting with the sheriff was a picture of Reggie Wright Sr. at the MGM that night watching Orlando Anderson being detained. We had sent that photo around to many of the people that Russell knew that also knew Reggie Wright Sr. They all agreed it was him at the MGM that night. Russell Poole also saw the entire MGM video and he knew there was more to the story. I went up to uh, Palm Desert where Russell's sister lived and we spent a weekend preparing Russell for that meeting. And we went through that MGM. We got a higher resolution uh, copy of that that we could. And we watched it over and over and over again. And Russell Poole came to conclusions over that weekend. Number one, these cases could be solved. Number two, corrupt cops were involved. And number three, these cases were related We had traction, we had momentum, and all it required was a justice system brave enough to stand up to the corruption. Sadly, Russell was, as the sheriff said, killed in the line of duty. He was an American hero. Calling him an American hero upsets the balance of power in our corrupt world. It flies in the face of the half a billion dollars they've spent to dirty Russell up. They must sideline me to keep their disparaging lies alive. They must never utter the names Michael Douglas Carlin or Chaos Merchants, and they never say anything good about Russell Poole that received 42 commendations while he was working for LAPD. The Orlando Anderson beatdown was the first act in the school play. And we know from the Wallace civil trial documents that Rafael Perez, David Mack, and Kevin Gaines were all there in Las Vegas too that night. And we know that the Orlando Anderson lie is dead. We go back to the Tim Brennan of who was in the car. That's all changed. And then it's Orlando Anderson. Keefe D handed him the gun. And then it's now it's T. Brown. And so the lies are constantly morphing. Most people have never read the Orlando Anderson deposition. And the fact is that Afini Shakur filed a wrongful death suit against 
Orlando Anderson, that suit was settled. And it was the day that Orlando Anderson was supposed to go pick up the check, the $78,000 settlement check, that he was shot and killed. And who was on the scene first? It was Reggie Wright Sr. And Compton cops were three blocks away. They got there a minute after. And other people had been shooting besides the Stone Brothers and Orlando Anderson. Michael Duro never touched a gun. There was no gunshot residue on his hands. And the Compton cops that showed up said it looked like Reggie had been there for a while. Now, I don't know what any of that means, but if you're supervising the interrogation and he's about to get a check and admit that he wasn't the shooter and Afini was going to admit that he wasn't the shooter and he gets killed that day, obviously somebody wanted to take him out to keep that lie alive. And the lie is now officially dead. So Russell Poole solved these murders and now the cop that's taking victory lap, laps is stealing Russell's valor. He now wants to steal Russell Poole's position as the original robbery homicide lead investigator on the Tupac and Biggie cases. And that's why I'm sidelined. Those of you out there that have YouTube channels can use any of my content in your broadcast or video productions because it isn't about money for me. It's about putting out the truth. My channel was demonetized long ago, so use this content and retitle it as you see fit. Since Russell's death, we've learned so much. Mayor Eric Garcetti disclosed at a press conference that over 70 emergency responders from Los Angeles, both police and fire department, were working at the concert the night of the 2017 Las Vegas shooting and that it's a common practice to hire from Los Angeles when resources were stretched in Las Vegas. I spoke to a salty dog security manager at the MGM that told me that gang cops were often hired, hired on fight nights from Los Angeles and Compton. And we also learned that on March the 16th of 1996, when Mike Tyson fought Frank Bruno at the MGM Grand Hotel, Compton City officials emerged from the fight floor where they were watching only to see Compton police working security for the fight. Who was there? Reggie Wright Sr., Brennan, Ladd, and others. They asked the city officials not to rat them out as this was highly illegal, being cross-jurisdictional, and the fact was they never received permission by the Compton City to be there. So they were working security also for the Tyson-Selden fight the night Orlando Anderson got beat up and the night Tupac got shot. How else did the MGM security tape get into evidence in Suge Knight's probation hearings? It was collected by the corrupt Compton police while they were working at the MGM that night. Remember, that tape was entered into evidence by David Kenner, a man hired to represent Suge's interests, who didn't represent him well in that case, and he didn't represent him in, a murder, in the murder-burger case. How is it he can get Snoop Doggy Dog off of a murder beef but he can't get Suge Knight out of a probation violation. And after he's fired in the murder burger case, he issues uh, protective orders to derail Suge's case and to derail Suge from having any contact with anybody outside. So we know that David Kenner is complicit in this stuff. He didn't do a good job for Suge Knight and he entered the tape into evidence. So on an interview after Russell's murder, I was asked there to talk about the cases. After almost no questions from the interviewer, he immediately opens up the discussion to callers. And there's only one caller. It's stolen valor, Greg Kading. The call drops and magically he calls in again. Now, it was a setup. 
and I had seen what appears to be uh, Greg Kading and the Compton Police in the MGM video, I asked him where he was the night Tupac was shot. He was shocked by the question. His reaction was so telling, and he never expected that he was ever going to be asked that question. But now we know that they were all in the same camp. Greg Kading was a gang expert, and we know that the MGM employed gang expert experts at fight nights, so it isn't a stretch that Greg was in Las Vegas that night. Back then, Kading said that no LAPD police had ever worked for Death Row Records. He didn't know that I had worked in Century City for 17 years. I casually knew many of the Beverly Hills cops, and I asked them about the Rampart sc Scandal cops. All of the old-timers had stories of having badges and guns flashed in their faces by Rafael Perez, David Mack, Nino Durden, and Kevin Gaines rolling with death row records. They didn't like having cops trade on the thin blue line, and this quickly dispelled the myth that the cops had never been associates of the Reggies and had never worked for death row records. And so many other others now have weighed in on Mac and Perez and Durden and Gaines having worked for death row records that this lie has been debunked completely. The other lies are all collapsing too. Stay on their asses. Keep the truth coming. Every case ever touched by any one of these corrupt cops must be overturned and the restitution must be paid out even if it totals into the tens of billions of dollars because they need to be taught a lesson. Get these corrupt cops on the witness stands and under oath and confront them with solid evidence and ask them tough questions. Look at every single case they touched and get all those case files and identify these patterns of behavior that occur over and over with this crowd. Now, I appreciate that young man that stood up for me on Choke No Joke Show, and I appreciate all that stand up for the truth. Chaos Merchants was the unfinished work of Russell Poole. It is the truth that nobody ever mentions because of their profit motives or their cover-up motives, and chaos merchants pierces through their narratives, but every single fact that, it is, that is in the book is footnoted at Russell's insistence. You can know where a particular piece of information came from by looking at those footnotes. Chaos merchants is Russell Poole's last living word on these murders. Sergio Robledo, who Don Sikorsky referenced on Choke No Joke Show, encouraged me to release it as far and as fast as I could immediately after Russell's death. And I talked to him an hour after I learned that Russell had passed. He said, get it out as far and as fast as you can immediately. 24 hours later, it was released for free. That manuscript cuts through many lies of those that have narratives to peddle. Russell Poole was not deranged. He wasn't an alcoholic. He had no narrative to push. He insisted that every fact be footnoted. That doesn't sound like someone who's deranged trying to push a narrative. He kept reciting the homicide investigator's creed to me. No greater honor will ever be bestowed on an officer or more profound duty imposed on them than when they are entrusted with the investigation of the death of a human being. It is their duty to find the facts, regardless of color or creed, without prejudice, and to let no power on earth deter them from presenting these facts to the court without regard to personality. Russell knew the power of corruption that existed on earth, the corruption that he was standing up to, and yet he elected to pursue the facts of these cases that led to his death. 
Instead of disparaging him, y'all should be celebrating him and his courage to stand up to pure evil for people he had never met that lost their lives at the hands of evil people, while many others turned a blind eye and many participated in covering up the truth. Be of good cheer that cops like Russell Poole stand up to cops like Rafael Perez, Nino Durden, Kevin da- Gaines, David Mack, Greg Kading, Reggie Wright Jr., Bobby Ladd, Tim Brennan, Reggie Wright Sr., and Police Chief Bernard Parks, even if it led to his death. So guys, what's going on? Uh, Kading, Greg Kading is out. His lawyer won't let him do it. So, so we've been waiting around for Kading all day, and yeah, and he now he's not coming. No show. Really, I wanted to talk to him because there's so much to ask him. Yeah. Puffy was going up the stairs, and he said, "I don't care if Tupac died, I don't care if Biggie got to die, and I don't care if she got to go to prison for the rest of his life." <laughs> Getting back to Russell, Russell was following in the footsteps of his dad, and he was able to work through the LAPD and have all the things that had to be done within the LAPD. He certainly knew the streets very well, and uh, his circumstances in his case were far more tragic because he was killed in the line of duty. Killed in the line of duty. The best case, did, Pac, did Tupac like mean anything? Because they never saw that case. Sometimes if you saw the first case, you might saw the second case. But that never happened, correct? Yep. But he did testify reluctantly. The death row records security chief Reggie Wright Jr. once told him, quote, we're going to get those mothers who downed Pac. Ice and I, we've heard consistently, Suge, that you're the person behind the hit on Biggie. Well, they looked at y'all and told y'all to put ass live. A reportedly missing photograph and former police chief Bernard Park's daughter came up during testimony today in the wrongful death lawsuit filed against the city by murder rap star Biggie Small's mother. And that, to me, was probably another motive for Chief Parks to want to squash a lot of the information. There was an effort to, to keep a lot of the information away from the public. This declaration from a jailhouse informant named Kenny Boagney links crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. Okay. Right, you see, Suge was willing to say, I didn't know those two cops, but maybe Reggie knew them. Never met those dudes, they never worked for me. They knew Reggie right. They didn't know me. He always would say, those are Reggie people. <laughs> And Reggie was fast to say, I didn't know them either. I was just interested in why he would point the finger at Shug so quick. He wouldn't say it to you, but he definitely pointed it. We call that dry snitching. That Perez told how he worked security for Death Row Records the night Biggie Smalls was assassinated, and how he and Mac used cell phones to set up the hit. Boagney now says he was instructed by an LAPD detective to share his story with no one else investigating Biggie's murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper says LAPD may be involved in what she calls deliberate and intentional concealment of information. Jailhouse informant Kenny Boagney ties former LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of rap star Biggie Smalls. LAPD has withheld reams of other evidence as well, including at least two other jailhouse statements implicating Dirty Cops Mac and Perez in Biggie's murder. A thousand pages of information were withheld describing Mac and Perez's involvement in Biggie's murder. Three different jailhouse informants who offered to wear a wire were all turned down by LAPD. A wire, say informants, that could have caught jailed officer Perez boasting about his involvement with death row records and the Biggie Smalls murder. Judge Florence Marie Cooper lists all the new information she says links former crooked LAPD officers David Mack and Rafael Perez to the murder of Biggie Smalls. The sheer volume of the information, says the judge, belies any LAPD argument that it comes from just another jailhouse informant. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. 
Perez and them was all involved. They were trying to kill me too, but see, because Perez and, and, and Reg and was good friends, and Perez and Sharita and Reg is great friends, and so all those three together was trying to plot. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching it. So that just took the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to him. Cause Lando wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they saw the second one, cause it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Murder is pretty simple. The first person you go after is the spouse. All the artists at Death Row was willing to come with him. David Mack worked for you, right? No, ma'am. Never? Never met him. Never heard of him. Didn't know who he was until the accusations that he possibly did work for me. And that's been investigated by LAPD and all of that. Hey, why would I want a paper trail when I never brought him around nowhere? So if I'm going to hide him in secret, you think I'm going to let somebody catch a paper trail? They were paying cash by Snoop. Perez and was all involved. They were trying to kill me too. But see, because Perez and, and, and Reg and was good friends. And Perez and Sharita and Reg is great friends. And so all those three together were trying to plot. How about Rafael Perez? Never heard of him until all the incidents happen. Those guys, if you go back and watch the film, they was already stalking Pac, watching it. So that just tipped the iceberg when something happened. But that was, there was a plan already to do something to it. So why does everyone keep telling me that David Mack was working for you? Yeah, I never heard that. You never heard that? That he worked for me. I You've heard, never heard that? Wait a minute, uh, let me clear that Come up. On. I'm saying by anyone that's credible, that will work around there or anything. Um, like I said, that was all investigated by LAPD. I turned over my payroll, everything. You always will tell you, those are Reggie people. <laughs> Atlanta wasn't even the shooter, you know? He was actually a good kid, too, you know? I'm quite sure they, 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 they saw the first one, they saw the second one, because it's the same circle of people. You got a lot to cover up, y'all. You got a lot to cover up. Same people, same circle of people. It had nothing to do with me, you know?